Hello, this is Greg Allison from Galactic Gregs coming to you today to report about the uh, rapid disassembly, rapid, sudden, unexpected disassembly, as we like to say in aerospace, for an explosion of the MK-1 rocket of SpaceX yesterday afternoon on the 20th of November. This is the one on the 21st. And I come to you from wreckage of the DCX rocket uh, to tell you about this incident. And this, by the way, is in my backyard. So. Uh, what happened is that SpaceX was doing a pressure test of the MK-1 in Boca Chica, Texas yesterday afternoon. And according to uh, SpaceX officials, they uh, were pressurizing the system to the max, so the outcome was not totally unexpected. They did report that there were no injuries, fortunately, and, but they did say that this was a serious setback. Well, no doubt. Uh, what happened is, is it overpressurized and parts of the rocket blew out, sending parts flying high in the sky. Uh, it was a pressure uh, explosion of sorts, so it was not a fiery explosion. There was no fire. It was an overpressurization. But uh, those can be fairly energetic, too, and, of course, destroy a, a vehicle. As I have mentioned about launch vehicles, launch vehicles are, are kind of like a long, long chain with many, many links. If any one of them goes out, the whole thing can come apart. So uh, you're very reliant on a whole lot of stuff to make a launch vehicle work. And as, as y'all may recall from some videos, some of uh, the creators here on the YouTube have shown a day-by-day, -day, blow by blow assembly of every little piece on uh, the, the MK-1. And uh, those videos uh, show quite a few details of things. And uh, you got a lot of welds and rework and cutting and recutting and rewelding. And all it takes is one little weld going bad. And there were a whole lot of wells on MK1. Now, to that effect, uh, Elon Musk uh, did, uh, in fact, type the following. He said, this had some value as a manufacturing pathfinder, but the flight design is quite different. Well, no doubt, we know that. We knew that the, the MK1 was indeed a prototype, and we did see a lot of the retrofit going on out there at Boca Chica. Now, all that said, this will set back their schedule somewhat. This was the vehicle that they showed us uh, back in September that Elon used in his rollout and where he was talking Starship. And uh, there had been hopes that it would fly within a couple months. And I would say now that the, the prospects for this vehicle flying are uh, somewhat less than absolutely spectacular. I, it's probably never going to fly because it probably incurred a lot of damage. They got a lot of rework to do, a lot of evaluation to do. And when you have a pressurized system, what you typically do is you overpressurize it with a proof test where you actually go beyond the design limitations of the, uh, well, beyond the operating design limits of the vehicle by some factor would give you a margin of safety, something like one and a half times the uh, operating uh, pressure. I don't know what they were proof testing the system to because aerospace systems typically are lower weight and you try to, to, to cut weight. So a lot of times you will do things that uh, maybe in aerospace to a little bit less than you would in industry when you're proof testing things. So that's a prospect. Uh, but, you know, it's like I said, there's a lot of uh, risk to rockets. And uh, fortunately, this was not an explosion. So Boca Chica was not at risk from that. But mind you, the SpaceX uh, uh, Starships, especially the full-blown Starships, will carry more fuel than a Saturn V or the Russian N1. And when the Russian N1 exploded over Pat, it threw debris six miles. And Boca Chicken's only two miles away. So Boca Chicken's, pay attention. Pay close attention. Uh, you got a chance to be bought out by SpaceX. I take the money and run. All that said, uh, fortunately for SpaceX, it's been funded by Elon Musk, and he is not adverse to failure. And uh, he is determined to get this job done. So I fully expect... He will put in the resources to redo it, reevaluate it, and get this thing going. And uh, we, we will see more in the days ahead. Uh, this is a speed bump to space flight, and there will probably be many more speed bumps to come. As we saw in the earlier landing test of the boosters for the Falcon uh, spacecraft, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, uh, there were a lot of explosions as they were trying to get those to land and land on the deck of a barge, but they worked it out. They had the determination to do that. They stuck with it. And given that, I'm expecting to see a lot more come forward in the Starship development. I think it's a very exciting development. So I anxiously await to see what's going to come. And I wish SpaceX the very best in so doing. And uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Click the update notification bell below. I will add some links later that will uh, be some things that will support me and my efforts here. And by the way, this DCX behind me here uh, flew several times. This was a reusable vehicle. 
it flow uh, several, several, several times. And, uh, but on the last mission, uh, a tech forgot to follow the proper procedures for uh, one of the landing legs. He didn't install the uh, hydraulics correctly. And one of the landing legs failed to deploy and it tipped over and burned uh, upon landing. And this is what's left. I'm sitting in the inner stage of the DCX rocket. And so thank you for watching.